Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start a new campaign. Well, kind of in the middle of a campaign in which we're playing as the state of Guangdong in TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Mogul Um, But we're back in Sony because there is a sub-mod for uh, TNO that gives us the new order Sony Plus, which is in the uh, first link in the description below, that uh, tries to mimic more of our, our own timeline Hong Kong reforms, got more focuses, Got a couple more ordinances for us to pass, and also there's so in the base game, um, some of these things you have to choose either or like you could buy dignity, or you can do safety first. With this sub mod, you can do both if you can pass both. Same thing with the bodies we see versus the air we breathe, and stuff like the housing crisis versus schooling shortage. These would be either or, so you have to do so. In this with this sub mod, you can do more focuses that will benefit the you know the people and whatnot. So we're gonna try. It's been a while since I've actually played TNO and. Actually played as Sony because I think I played them twice. Regardless, this has been a lot of fun doing this off screen too. Obviously, we still have uh, a couple of decisions that we have to make here, um, but we'll see. But we're going to talk about Chief Executive Morita, and I'm going to read pretty much everything just because it's been a long time since I've actually done this. After over a decade as a per uh, perennial underdog in Guangdong's corporate politics, Morita Akeo now reigns as Chief Executive, alongside his second in command and longtime ally Li Kaxing, the richest Zhu Jinan in Guangdong. For years, the two have built an empire in the shadow of the Japanese Zaibatsu, fighting as hard as they dare for the survival of Sony in Hong Kong, and for the livelihoods of the Chinese and Zhujin working for them. The scars of the pseudocrats are plain to see from Sony's headquarters in Hong Kong, the jobless, the poor, and the hungry rule the streets of Guangdong, bound together by creeping helplessness. But Morita and Lee believe that in every crisis lies an opportunity, both for the business and for the people. Uh, which one do we want? Doesn't really matter. It leaves ambition. A uh, few would have expected an unassuming factory owner and with nothing more than an elementary education to have climbed out of poverty to become the leader of Chong Kong, the only local conglomerate with a scale to join the five companies with interest in property, retail, distribution, and light manufacturing. To be rich is not enough. Lee will not stop until he's the richest man in Guangdong and capable of ensuring that the people of Guangdong do not suffer the same poverty he once did, preferably by eating out of his hand. Brother the competition, the chief executive. Sat in his new office, looking over the piles of reports, messages, and paperwork, sifting through the various stacks that her gaze came to rest upon a series of documents detailing Guangdong's elder brother in the sphere, Manchukuo. The report detailed Manchukuo's path through the chaos of the Asuda crisis, with desperate factions within the state banding together under the figurehead of Asian Gyoro Puyi. Even now, they claim to be the sphere's greatest success and the light that shone the brightest. Such words only fill the chief executive with fire. Suzuki had made many mistakes during his tenure, but when it came to Guangdong's relationship with Manchukuo, he had been on the right track. Manchukuo might have not have been an explicit enemy of Guangdong, more of a rival, but their ways are old, out of touch, and soon to be left in the annals of history. Guangdong stood for a new approach, innovative, and disrupted an economic status quo that was becoming ever too comfortable. If Guangdong could, could finally beat Manchukuo uh, economically, it only served to vindicate the chief executive and all the great minds like him in Guangdong. A new economic age beckons. You know? So we're trying to lower corruption here, trying to get more approval from the Japanese government, the Chinese government. We got the product cycle in 100 days, literally 100 days, and then we're trying to increase police support like normal all across here, but we have no political power. 1964 Economic Review, um, okay, so I, I guess I won't read everything here. This is pretty normal, though. I'll read this once. Chief Executive Morita Keo and Consul General Takashima Masuo sat silently in their seats, eyes shifting from each other to the floor to anywhere else. Neither was particularly keen to open today's meeting, a formality observed for the sake of formality even as Yasuda's collapse had robbed both men of their time and sanity in equal abundance. Even though Guangdong's performance this year has fallen short of what we discussed last year, Takashima finally ventured, removing his glasses with a weary hand, I think we are both claiming extenuating circumstances are to blame. Chief Executive Morita Keo nodded silently, stifling a bitter chuckle at Takashima's assessment. Even if Tokyo proper had been supremely unhelpful, having Takashima acknowledge the utter bedlam that had followed Yasuda's collapse was more than he had hoped for. Be that it may, Takashima continued, replacing his glasses with a sigh. Tokyo has communicated that they'll expect Guangdong to do its part in the sphere's economic recovery. Takashima looked exhausted, having spent most of the past year fighting for the resources from Tokyo. Even Japan itself plunged into an economic and political meltdown. Chief Executive Morita Kei hoped the coming year would be slightly easier for them both, now that the use of the collapse was behind them and the company started looking back to the future. The air in the room remained heavy and still, even as the clock ticked relentlessly onwards. We should both get back to work. Probably. We currently get 1.57 political power every single day, which is pretty nice. And the next one we'll probably do is the command power one. At, uh, actually, probably this one, because it's less uh, political power. This land is my oyster. It's barely been a week, and Marit has already pressed these stinky fingerprints all over my government complex. I mean, 10 new Chong Kong names a day on the first floor? Mumbled e uh, Ibuka with a mouthful of bok choy, as if there wasn't someone else's opinion that forgot to ask before turning the whole darn place upside down. And if by someone else you mean the two of us, I agree. Matsushita chuckled as he downed another plastic cup of, of jasmine tea. Three, of course, of recounting Mr. Komai. His voice was cordial, the look he flashed Komai, seated to his left on the round table, anything but. That would make three of us versus Marita and Lee's two. There might be one company short, yes, but no less dangerous. 
Yeah, yeah, they're bad news. I saw it coming, you saw it coming. What else is new? He book a shrug, he's leaning back on his chair. All that's left to do is for Kamai to work his Kenpai Tai magic or whatever, and do whatever he does best, and Kamai, or, hello, K Kamai. Uh, and there was Kamai Kinachiro, oblivious to the clang of plates and of spoons of random, eyes frozen on the chopsticks in his right hand. Caught between two wooden halves is a roll of flour wrapped around a string of mincemeat, and his fingers squeezed and squeezed chunks of mince foam and ooze out of the seams as it did the dark red soy sauce down on the tablecloth below. For all the time I spent in Manchuria, he muttered, I never got to visit a meat factory and learn how to make pigs and a pork. Shame, really. He raised his head, meeting Ibuka, uh, and Matsushita's buffalo glares. glares. I appreciate our breakfast today together, gentlemen, for Hargao Siumai Maulai Ko Chong Fan. At this, he raised his chopsticks with a roll of flour. You would have find these names on a Japanese hotel menu. It's really a treat to try out things for the first time again. And we all have plenty of first in our lives, wouldn't you say? Oh, we're going to also do a performance of the civil service first. The Japanese dominated civil service is currently very prone to inefficiencies and corruption. Chief Executive Morita and Chief Secretary Lee have proposed minor reforms to the service so that the system can be less corrupt and inefficient, which will also increase the people's trust in us. So we'll decrease corruption, increase Zhujin and Chinese uh, support. We lose the Japanese expat support, but you know, we don't care. So, that'll help out. Um, that's not about too much, but it is what it is. And we also have a, a drink here, a Monster uh, Ultra Sweet or Ultra Strawberry Dreams. Which is partially re for why the reason I'm talking so fast. Two dreams and possibilities. Streamers, confetti. And empty bottles were strewn across the repurposed conference hall in Sony's Hong Kong headquarters, a stone's throw from the murky waters of Port Shuri. The rivalry started as soon as Morita and his lead's motorcade arrived at dusk, as Sony engineers and Chong Kong managers streamed in from the building to welcome their tired but and generals. Morita's sweat bumped into an errant beer bottle, rolling unattended on the floor. The amount of alcohol and food prepared at short notice was astounding, he thought, but not any more so than his election as chief executive only hours before. Did you put all this together, Kashing? Morita asked, as he gingerly made his way to the table of honor, now abandoned except for Lee. Do I need to pay for it? It's on the house, Lee chortled, a faint flush on his face as he offered Marita one last cup of brandy. Join me? Marita nodded before grimacing at the sound of his shoe ripping itself free from the soiled carpet and the cleaning. Worry about that tomorrow, Lee waved Marita off dramatically, raising his glass. Tonight we toast future. I'm serious, Marita replied. I don't think we'd ever make it this far, Kishing. Matsushita is in this for himself, and Ibuka and Kamai are going to jump on any mistakes we make. We have to worry about the details and what's possible. The future, our dreams, is finally within reach, Shikeo, Lee admonished him, a fine, suddenly clarity to his voice. How can you worry about what is possible when we haven't tried anything yet? Tomorrow, a delicate dance begins. And Morita's dream, driven from Japan in 1952. Uh, Akeo has seen much since he's washed ashore in Guangdong, penniless and abandoned. Years of backbreaking effort have earned him more respect from the ever found than he ever found in Japan as a man who fought the Zaibatsu in spite of their overwhelming material advantages. Now, as he holds uh, the future Guangdong in his hands, Morita knows he has no time to waste to ensure that Sony can turn its moment in the spotlight into everlasting glory to reward the many backers of Guangdong's homegrown champion by taking it only from one of many to the one and only. And, of course, advancements in data technology. Fantastic news from the engineers and executives of Guangdong today as a new investments in data technology, or data storage technology, has been announced for the fiscal year. These devices have storage sizes uh, previously thought impossible, as well as high read and write speeds allowing for fast transfers, which will surely prove massively beneficial for our economy, as professional work sector will continue to grow alongside it. Uh, this can fit how many sheets of paper? Probably quite a few. But still, uh, there goes Brazil. Uh, I want to do this one next, because I still want to reduce the corruption, because it's still going up 1.1% every month, so... And honestly, we need to save political power. As much as I want to do all this stuff, which we do need to do, um, the product cycle is coming on, and soon we might be able to do one or two of these, maybe. Which would be good. Lee's ambition. Reflecting on, em on emptiness, wait here. The driver of the company, car idled the engine as Lee Kishin exited, walking briskly towards the gates of his estate. A two story, full size house, in the hills overlooking the South China Sea, nestled away from the bustle of urban Hong Kong, away from the Japanese enclaves on the peak. The Japanese magnates and socialites might scoff at his ambition in calling the property an estate. By the standard of the palatial mansions of private forests, Lee's house barely counted as civilized, yet it was still held it was still heads and shoulders above the tenements that housed the majority of the population, Chinese or Zhujin alike. Lee went inside, letting the evening sunlight illuminate the entrance hall, hall, large enough for his family and a few more besides to stand comfortably on cypress flooring. He could hear the cries of his infant son from upstairs and the soft shuffling of a caretaker's feet moving to tend the, to the boy, playing through the walls and doors, but not so quite to be as to be distant. No space and comfort enough to live well without being empty. Emptiness. As he rummaged in the kitchen for some extra fruit, his wife, Yong Ying, handed him a basket. He, he thought that emptiness was not a function of space. He remembered a boy of 13, his scratched knees bent beside a threadbare, worn blanket, bloody by the terminal cough. In the tiny hovel he and his father called home, he had promised the whole of our family will have a good life, and then he had been alone. Lee hurried back to the gate, handing the overflowing basket to a surprised driver. For your family, he said. The driver shook his head, but Lee insisted. We have to look out for each other, and I will have more. More than just survival, the new Guangdong will not simply be a playground for the corporations to do as they will, while leaving broken bodies and discarded dreams in their wake. 
From Moritian Lee, even as they received their official mandate from Tokyo to surpass Manchuko and to usurp their position in the co-prosperity sphere, they dream of something else. To make life in Guangdong a honor about that just survival, and to get rich while doing so. Hey, more growth. I like it. Alright, because we've been fighting here. That's relatively close. That's somewhat close. And this one, can't fight Tai, has too much influence. So we have 25. Oh, we can wait and do this one. Uh, I cost more political power. We get this one faster if we do it anyways right now. Eh, might as well wait a couple more days. There we go. Hey, we turn to blue. They're equal, almost 29.91%. Barely. Woo, that is close. And of course, we're going to have overwhelming support with no air force. And mirages, huh? Uh, the blinding sun bore down on the man hunched on the bare concrete, a rumpled shirt, hanging untucked from the tattered trousers. His body strung with shadow breaths, nothing paid him much. Nobody paid him much a notice, or if they did, they gave him the man a wide berth. Marita wondered if he'd been set adrift by Yasuda's collapse. He fought down the urge to offer him some yen he could, but the man was at one of thousands. He couldn't save everybody, no matter how hard he tried, and he wasn't trying. He made it to become chief executive, hadn't he? Uh, as he turned to leave, trying to disappear into the crowds, but to no avail. When he tried to squeeze into a gap, he would be nudged, bumped, jostled back into the impromptu spotlight. Would the world not let him go on without facing the hunched man? Murray his throat itched with a sudden thirst as he approached a pitiful wretch. Faintly heard the scratchy notes of a familiar melody coming from the man's hand, the TR-56, the first transistor radio Sony ever sold. It was incomplete. It was on closer inspection. The first prototype, all loose screws and exposed wiring, stolen from Tokyo Telecommunications in the last position to his name. Marita jolted upright. Though suppressing a yell, was bursting from his throat, and an artificial breeze swept over him as his eyes adjusted to the darkness in his bedroom, furnishing with antique rosewood and overlooking the lights of Port Shorty. His breathing shallow and rapid, slowly returned to reality. Marita drained the glass of water on the on the table in an instant. Hands trembling, waking clarity told him that he wouldn't get more sleep that night. Not that he ever wanted to see that particular memory again. Night terrors. It's alright. We all can't sleep here. Alright? Making stake in identity. Look how little corruption is. Ah. Hey, it's less than 1%. That's really good. Get a lot more political power and growth and monthly Chinese government support. That's actually really good. And also, we need to do the meet with representatives, too. Oh, narcotics. Waste paper. Loose change. Don't want to know what the socks for, muttered Kawasaki, rummaging through cupboards. I swear they're doing this on purpose. Throwing us out the sin, maybe, huh? Asked Ito. Himself chuckling underwear into a pile of soiled clothes and ripped out shelves. I reckon I had a few cents too many today, replied Kawasaki, prizing, prizing open um, another shelf. Okay, documents. He raffled through a few bills, bills, junk mail, bills, junk mail. Oh, find something? Maybe, said Kawasaki. Come look at this. Familiar? The same guy who tipped us off in the first place, but the name's different. Matches the name in the book at least. You tell him this guy is in Japanese? Kawasaki moved his hands through his shelves, landing on another page. Well, I don't see that every day, he muttered. Immigration papers, not a local boy. Came all the way down from Manchukuo, it looks like. Strange, they usually come from the Republic. Two identities, and no sign of a witness anywhere. Fishy as heck. Just think of a fish, says he don't. Let's do a final sweep and go to the next name on the list. The quicker the better. And cause instant with Manchurians? If only for the sake of our noses. Gosh. So right now, we have a tiny, tiny surplus. Tiny. A little bit of growth, which is not bad. Oh. We can continue on with the music, too. It's fine with me. Uh, 100 more days we have for the product cycle. 50, less than two months. We gotta save political power. Uh, we'll save the political power. I wanna keep doing this, but we gotta wait. The Japanese expat support is what? 70 some percent? 66 percent. That's not enough. 56 percent from the Zhujin comprises 21 percent of Guangdong's total population, which is good to help lower monthly uh, corruption and whatnot. The Chinese support is 43 percent, which is not good. Oh. Not bueno, but that being said, what's next? Capitalism with a human face. The malaise of today. This is government support, which is nice, meaning of work. Um, 43 out of 100 seats. Labor Relations Committee, no, we can't do that one. The health crisis. You get 50%, poverty slowly gets better. Or, can we do reforms to security? And that was Stanley Ho. Tolerate some vices. Uh, Takuzi Yakuza support in Macau. Professionalize the police. Brought up the standard, the Japanese will forever have an excuse to interfere in affairs. But look at this, no restrictions with the rules of engagement. Huh. Give more Chinese and Japanese opinion. Uses police control in the all, and not all states, but maybe all states. Police boxes, not bad. Increases police control, decreases Japanese expat support though. Language training is not bad. Do small things right. Organized crime bureau. Ooh, basic training with combat schooling. More military professionalism change, but cost a little bit more, but that's probably okay. Demand jurisdiction for the Kampai Tai. Demand Colonel Miyazaki to withdraw the Kampai Tai to the barracks. And the public ordinance order. Don't have quite enough support for that. Casino license. 
Oh, hearts and minds. Let's go to reform security. Oh. Well, we're gonna do this one. And so goes an old joke running around the pubs at Central. A man at work with 10 yen must pay the three teeth before he comes back home. Three to the Shirokia Hotel, three to the Camp Ata, and three to the Commissioner of Police. By dinner time, all of our poor heroes left for his house, and ladies half a yen. What about the other half? One would ask them. Why? The other would reply to the lady mistress and one chai, of course. And why are there three teeth and not four? Because half a yen is no teeth and one chai. That's a dowry. Everyone laughs because it's true, and that doesn't mean it should remain so, though. Delivering on promises. Ooh, as much as this would be nice. This is so close that I think we just have to do it. Yeah. Residents of Guangdong, I promise you a better future. Prosperity and profit are a boon to be shared as our managers and our workers share in risk, so too should they share in reward. Words are cheap, Lee Chuan muttered, even as chief executive of a trust. Could barely be heard about the clattering of plates in the kitchen. Had the family been promised so much, a home, raises, time off, only to have uh, their hopes dashed as mother Mai shook her head as she scrubbed the last dish with a frank towel, but hey, why were glued to the aging radio? Transfixed by the honey words, too innocent to know it was, not easier. It was easier to not to hope. Lam Hao Sun took a long drag of cigarette in his police station's break room, scarcely listening to the radio broadcast. The experiences of the last few months, the desperation, the lawlessness, the exhaustion were all too deeply engraved in his mind to be prepared over by a few nice words and promises. He stubbed out the cigarette as he donned his cap, heading out as the next patrol. He believed them when, and if, he saw them. Yoshiko rubbed her temple as her head throbbing from the strain of trying to follow the Cantonese translation that had followed the speech. She'd learned enough to understand that what a shopkeeper had said the other day, to her own embarrassment, but she still didn't know enough to say anything in response. She'd have to learn faster, she thought, so she could actually ask people if Marita was delivering on his promises. Lee was waiting in the chief executive's office upon Marita's return, handing him a, sh a sheaf of papers, waiting for their attention. Marita accepted them without a word, and the two settled their first long, many long nights at the office. Actions speak louder than words. Very true. Oh, corruption. Okay, why not? It's very low right now, which is actually very good, but... 1.76 political power days, not bad. It's April, still has a tiny bit of surplus, reform security. I kind of want to do all the security stuff as fast as we possibly can. That seems like fun. But we want to do the Guangdong Spirit. Draw plans. Of stability. 44 seats versus of excellence. It's for Chung Kong's vision. I think I still want to go with uh, Morita for this one. Stable economy for stable nation. Growth goes up by 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Yeah, I think I want to do all this stuff. You will go to the Guangdong spirit after this one. From the ashes of Yasuda, new Guangdong must rise, with the old Guangdong focus on profitability at the expense of long-term stability. Chief Executive Morita now faces the question of how to redefine Guangdong's economic model for his term in office. If we want to be as transformational a leader as we aspire to be, then its decision will have, to have, will have monumental, monumentous consequences. Yeah. Influence continues to change throughout the month, so it is what it is. The reorganization of the Dutch realm, huh? Compromise is key. Depends on who you ask and depends on who is in, in power. <sighs> it's been a while since I played Tino. Fantastic mod. One of my favorites. That and Oro Blues and whatnot, you know. Uh, let's see. Oh, restoration of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist or Socialist Soviet Republic. Corruption, police weakness, crime, and vice all must be addressed head on. So, analysis of the Guangdong police force is next. Coach, you get some more police presence, which is nice. Awfully corrupt in a nutshell, my guess, is that one out of every four officers take bribes on the side and the other three are paid far too little that they would probably take one too. It's just that nobody's offering them one. The gear there reflects a funding too. Most of the weapons at their stations are ancient things, some dating back to pre-World War One. I. I wouldn't be surprised to find a breech-loader rifle sitting in one of their armories. The force has earned itself a bad reputation too with the bribes and such. But people view them as just another two other oppressors. We can fix that with just some more funding in a bit of time. Ooh. Omorikan, the new police commissioner, painted a grim picture, but not one that Morita wasn't prepared to handle. Uh, he expected this, and he called the meeting between the commissioner, Stanley Ho, and uh, Lee Kishin as a response. Do you have some ideas? Morita replied. The man nodded. I do. What happens to this nation most likely would not be tolerated in a Japanese city. But I would appreciate an explanation as to why he's here. Uh, Omori gestured towards the ever si silent Stanley Ho. He's a connection to some honorable gentleman, and he serves well as a political ally. While you work on cleaning out the police force, Stanley will work on the people funding them from the underworld. Lee explained, Marita could always sense some hidden tension between the commissioner and Stanley, but they would just have to make do. It would not do to have men at each other's throats, um, before the operation was nothing but a plan. Huh, Omori glanced at Morita, then at Lee, and then finally to the seat at Stanley Ho. Very well, Mr. Ho. I look forward to our future as partners. Shall we shake on it? Politics make strange bedfellows. 
Two weeks left, and we've got some uh, army XP to do. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Hey, we're doing 50% increase for our uh, surplus. That's pretty nice. Uh, poverty's still getting worse. Not good. Mm, not ideal. Never ideal. But it is what it is. Fiscal health is cautious. Very cautious. Five days. So after the Guangdong Spear, I do want to go with the right side here. What else do we have here? New line on the rocks. Completed capitalism with the human face. Shining Megapolis. Oh, wow. New consumerism. Increased liquid reserves. Beyond the limits. Huh. Oh, that seems pretty good. But we're going to the of excellence. The Morita Keo and Li Kuxing were the voices of a heterodox faction in Guangdong's politics, arguing for greater emphasis on equity for employees and now residents in addition to stakeholders and investors. The position of chief executive comes with an altogether wider perspective. Morita now nominally has answers to the powers that be in the Japanese government, which have made clear that they expect continued growth and success from Guangdong, answering the expectation of Tokyo while continuing a commitment to reshape Guangdong into something resembling a home for its people, constitutes a challenge of monumental scale. For Morita, Guangdong will need to emphasize its traditional strengths, uh, its culture of innovation, efficient business, and productivity in order to generate the returns needed to ensure that both Tokyo and the people receive their dues. Invisible cities. They say the city never sleeps. In the strictest terms, this is only true of the main streets, landmarks, and central thoroughfares which conjured up the terse image of Hong Kong, whose lights can never uh, extinguish lest the representations perish with them. Behind the main stage, an immense mass of a uh, blackened scaffolding ran for stretches incomprehensible even to the residents beyond the particularities, inescapable to those caught within, yet unknowable to those outside. And yet even with the terrorist camera did not grace, but in passing, the city never could truly sleep, scarcely. Uh, came a time when every lamp and every block was extinguished instead. Various yellow-orange patterns flickered around the hive, different configurations of hedonism, insomnia, and surbitistiousness, swirling around countless peculiarities. In one desolate window, nestled within a maze of streets, the lingering flame did not re remain constant, but flashed to the rhythm of percussion, and ephemeral moments bringing their own permanence. The officers who barged into the apartment had never been in the, this part of town before. Upon entering, could only recreate the block from the elements already within their mind and maybe from the rhythm of their lives. The same bags of opium and heroin, the same dead or bleeding perps, those same filth whose ritual purging uh, defined their existence. When they found the half-decayed shell of an officer who had shed this place before, however, the lines of poverty or lines of particularity became unavoidable and fragments of place would ever would linger ever after. A million lingering threads lost in... Oh my god. Oh boy. In ephemeria. Uh, I call this once, while every day is a battle for uh, for the corporate warlords, or warlords, warriors, and emperor scientists of Guangdong, one day in particular stands out among the rest uh, in the singular importance. An army of managers spread forth from Koshu's boardrooms and bearing budgets, memorandums, and orders to office spaces and factory floors across Guangdong, heralding in uh, <coughs> uh, the start of the year's product cycle. Once again in 1964, the four companies of Guangdong raised the seat. Who can memorize and win over the hearts and wallets of the world with their advancements in gadgetry and engineering? Whether through technical brilliance and unforgettable marketing or ruthless cost management, one company will either take the world by storm or crash ignominiously into failure. As the company's fortunes go, so does the Guangdong's economy. Spony Hitachi has all the answers. Of course they do. Radio promises. The sound of music resonated uh, in and the otherwise quiet room of Hamauchi. Uh, Hiroshi, who was diligently sifting through the mounds of paperwork and handling them with care. Whether it be filling forms or writing up the rest of uh, long postponed records um, or, or reports, Yamauchi studiously attended to his work to the tune of the wonderful music on Guangdong's airwaves that provided some distraction from the otherwise gloomy city. So when the music stopped, so did he and his work, interrupted by a breaking news announcement. Yamauchi glanced at the radio as he put down his pen and laid uh, back in his office chair, using the announcement as an opportunity to rest from his work. The voice had evidently jaded, but an enthused reporter came on, announcing the ascension of Morita Keo to the post of chief executive. The announcement came as a shock to Yamauchi, but he listened with more attentiveness than before as the reporter read out a public statement issued by the new executive. The statement promised sweeping changes to Guangdong through several reforms uh, Morita's administration intended to enact, with the hopeful promise of turning Guangdong into a powerful home for both Japanese and Chinese, where one would be able to move forward with their own merits rather than their race. Yamauchi scoffed and took off his glasses. While he was so far regarding Morita's promises, he found himself doubting the veracity of them. Finding them to be somewhat naive and empty, a merits of a race, huh? Like that'll fly in the city. He cleared a part of his desk and put up his feet. Reclining in his chairs, he stared at the small window just by his side, sunlight softly illuminating his desk. He contemplated the integrity of Morita's character, wondering if the promises he made were just as fake as the knockoff radio Sony made in their year early years. Hmm, but what kind of person is he really? Though he felt deep down that Morita was sincere and his message resonated with Yamauchi after all. Who knows the struggle Morita went through and both men were afraid of losing it all. Afraid of getting swallowed up by Guangdong as it carefully balances the tightrope of society. 
Uh, lost some thought. The music coming back. Sorry, you Machi. Signal that he ought to get back to work. Go on, Dungboos Ford. One executive at a time. So, uh, product release. Well, right now, as you can see, not very good. Above average profitability. But uh, product interest, product quality, not so good. So, wait, last time off screen, I did Chile. Let's go to Argentina. All right, so we got a little bit of political power we can play with here. So we're going to do this. Expat support goes down. I'm not going to lower our Japanese influence support. And there goes all the political power that we had. God dang it. Next up, we're probably going to do 5%. No, that's not enough for us, is it? I'm not going to do Zuzhin support or ooh, advancements in audio and visual technology. I guess if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. Oh, does that raise it right now? No, it doesn't. Darn it. Dang it, that sucks. 5%, 5%. Still 95 days. We keep a lot of political power here. The Guangdong Spirit is drawing up plans. And. Oh, there goes Tricky Dick. Bye, Tricky Dick. Oh, Morito Keo, the chief executive of Guangdong, uh, stared out at over the Guangdong cityscape and contemplated the small shops in the streets and factories in the far distance. He turned around as his cabinet filed in for the meeting. Li, his trusted friend and ally, Stanley Ho, the self-assured trader, and Matsushita, leader of the faction of Guangdong's company, still willing to work with Morito. He invited them to sit down and bade them prepare, prepare for a long discussion. They, knowing the stakes, sat down. After all, they were debating nothing less than the future of the Guangdong economy. Li Keqing and Stanley Ho argued that the focus had to be on the stability of Guangdong society. That meant to them, giving the Chinese and Zhujin more opportunity to make their hard work mean something, they reminded Morita that there was no shortage of people that would work harder they were rewarded for. Matsushita, on the other hand, was clearly out of his element. Morita, noticing this, gave him some time to gather his thoughts with agreement of the other two. He at last argued while, that while economic stability was well and good in principle, Guangdong needed to compete against the juggernaut of Manchukuo and state-owned corporations. Then he said, I know that the only success is due to your exacting quality standards. Murita knew that that was an obvious attempt to throw the ball to him, however. He also knew that Matsushita had a point. Another thing Murita was aware of was that Lee was not going to budge on his argument no matter the circumstances. The choice was his in any case. Let's see. Growth. Industrial expertise. And security corporate networks will be added to our laws, huh? 0.75.75.75. This one, just because uh, it's an equipment and we get more Zushin support. Oh, no, well, both support. A perennial problem encountered by Sony and Chong Kong in the early years was the problem of scale. To find ways to compete against the financial and industrial resources of the Japanese behemoths in the playground. While the relative under, uh, underdevelopment of Guangdong and support of the Zhujin and Chinese community helped Morita and lead through the tumultuous 50s, the game has changed in the decades since. For the Zhujin and Chinese businesses to have any shot at repeating the meteoric rise of Sony and Chong Kong, they'll need to grow rapidly to integrate horizontally. In doing so, Morita helps to steer the creation of local conglomerates under Sony's guidance with a depth of financial and human resources to meet the Japanese competition head-on. Yay! Uh, this one's not back yet, is it? No. So be it. It's still 1964, which actually we can not do that. Armored trains, sure. 66, 64, there you go. Ah, yes. Global fleet distribution. Because you know we have such a gigantic navy. Right now, where are we at? We are at the 43% for quality, 31% for interest. Come on. Pop something else out here. Alright. We'll get something here. They'll all pop up probably one time. Was a treaty uh, lich. Very nice. See? There you go. And do we want to pop down here? <clears throat> there you go. I need that one too. That's fine. Wait, we've only 44 seats. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, a little bit of bribery should help, right? Oh. Uh, we also need political power for this and corruption, huh? Forty-seven percent. It's not terrible. The opinion is eighty-three percent, which is not bad. But the approval, 
Huh. The crew was capped at 100, so... Yeah. Solidarity. So we'll eventually have to vote on it. We'll see. Helping hand from the government. There can be no room for errors or wasted time. If the chief executive Morita is to guide Guangdong successfully into the breakneck economic growth needed to accomplish his vision. Guangdong must always be two steps ahead of the world at large to see the needs of the public, to know what the people want intuitively before they even know they need it. As an electronics pioneer in his own right, Morita is adamant that the government will direct privileged access to capital and funding behind those firms that are best positioned to shape the future. Importantly, Zhu Jin and Chinese. Entrepreneurs will be considered as potential. Recipients for government support. Doing otherwise would be an unjustifiable waste of an enormous reservoir of talent at Guangdong's disposal. <sighs> Where's the corruption, huh? Don't want to, but if we have to do it, then we have to do it. Where are we at for this? How many? 41 days left. 68%, 41%. We need more uh, interest. Honestly, we need more of both. It doesn't really matter. Passing on, got something for you, said Ito, making the almost comically large amount of paper on Kawasaki's desk completely larger, and threatening to finally spill over into the realm of the ca uh, comical. Make it comical. Treasure map to the bad guys, asked Kawasaki tonelessly. Yep's funeral, the chief says all we have to go we all have to go next week, said Ito. Exciting, I know. Kawasaki looked at the pamphlet. All in Cantonese too, I see. For three hours, important Cantonese phrases for funerals on the back too. And yet it seems that there's no Cantonese word for back of it, said Ito. Or common sense. Anyway, you found anything? Oh, stupid border. That's what I've got, said Kawasaki, taking a few se seconds to pull out the right ledger from the pile. Coming in everywhere, Fujian, Zhangji, Guangji, you name it, absurd quantities of goods and clients. So much, I think, half they're trying to impress somebody. Well, I'm impressed, said Ito. Do we at least have locations where the goods are coming from? Are coming over? Yeah, right through the main roads, customs and all. And the Chinese are just letting them peace? Pass? Isn't dealing with this their job? Well, we see how well they deal with other things. It's too much explained by bribery alone. Alright, what's next? Increase by 3% for 15, that's a fat stack. There we go. The new face of Pan Asian industry. If the Japanese led the way in creating industrial behemoths that are the economic light of Asia, then Guangdong will prove that this model is by no means unique to Japan. That the peoples of Asia with an unique or adequate access to capital, government guidance, and economies of scale are more than capable of ascending in the commanding heights of Asian industry. As Sony wills it, so it shall be. 1926. Uh, the face, uh, the house facing southward towards the sea, where faint peaks of foam crest the waves, surfing towards the, the cliff faces of the Tai Prefecture. The Han River flowed to the ocean here. Out in the South China Sea, under the gates of the Three Mountains, Lam Hao Sun began his life here, born in the house that the clan had owned for perhaps a century or more. Westward, the sun bent low, casting long shadows out of the squat buildings and gray stone archways dating back to the Tang era. The wind chimes jingled softly against the midsummer breeze that was the first memory Lam had. His mother cradled him in her lap. Barely two years old, Lam's first words were Mama and Papa. The words flowed out from the languid embraces of parental love, warm and sometimes suffocating. Mother and child spun the silk sp uh, spinner's wheel, round and round, watching as the machine refined the rough raw silk into a thin, soft fabric. She guided his hands, running his little fingers over the smooth, finished cloth. The child giggled as his mother explained the history of their clan. This was a family business. The people of Chao Zhao and Shan Tu, hardy, hardy settlers from the other provinces, made their living in the silk trade for centuries now. You're the children of these pioneers, she whispered to the child, In your blood flows the same resolute doggedness. Wherever you go, she stared into the eyes of the smiling child. Do not forget this. She spoke in the elegant, even dialect of Maizu Haka, trusting her child to understand what she could not say in Tao Chi. Guess people have been born, or have been, and guess people shall remain forever and forever. The placid, briny air of childhood betrayed nothing of the fervor that gripped the prefecture. The first memory Lamb had of his father was a silhouette against the crevice of the main door to the house and two faint senses. They're finally doing it, he said, looking into the eyes of his wife. We have to help somehow. The memory ended in the shadow of the three mountains, rising against the stars. Has it really been that that, that long ago? Only seven days left. Nice. Where are we at for approval? 68, 51. Um, we're nowhere near the caps, so... Twenty-three days left. By three percent, huh? Channel crisis. Nineteen days. There you go. The 
There you go. I'm okay with that. Yeah, then we got eventually a new federation as well. But to provide a helping hand. So we can't do this one, because this one will... Uh, after five days? Ah, five days, yeah. Can we get that much in five days? What a massive press conference. Well, we can't. We need 14 more political power. We don't get even two a day, so that one's kind of a wash. Push it forward by. Nah, that'd be a waste. We did a delay, it would decrease it by 20%, so. In all honesty, you might as well do something like this, and that's it. I like there's more corruption, though, so we don't want that one. It only takes five days for that one. There you go. High product quality. There you go. We're done. So next, we've got to do all this stuff. Corruption still going up by 0.93 every month. It's not great. It's not bad. What's in a name? Petty criminal. Petty criminal. Junkie. F-wit. Junkie F-wit. It just keeps going. Going through the spreadsheets was mind-consuming work. A process. Where signs once possessive signifier broke their fragile bonds to the mind of the witness, rising off the paper and swirling in a macabre dance around the ridges of comprehension. Kawasaki was so close in theory. Events a spiral of names and explicable details cropped up. These were tried operations. Sun Yan, 14K, you name it. Their hands were all along every edge of the border. Chinese run the whole way around, so why were there Japanese names everywhere? Some were about the Yakuza, but not to suggest any full-scale collaboration, and that went against what the rest of the report said. Names, photos, details, names, photos, details, pointless, pointless data. And there he was, grinning up at Kawasaki, the face of a man who had been attached to a Japanese witness, then a Chinese drug smuggler, then a Japanese man once again now named Awano. He dug further, current occupation, corporate security, former occupation, Ken Pai Tai officer. Time to make some calls across the river. Rubber on seats. Uh, the TA-1120 serial amplifier, the beauty of transistors, was not so much what they could make possible. Everything was worth doing. Oh, essentially it had been done once before, but that could be made smaller. Calculating machines could be shrunk for the entire work. Floors worth of space to a single room. Multiple records worth of songs could be fit into a magnetic tape. Now one could bring the technology of a recording studio into the home. A wholly unobtrusive package, though it would be hard to call the massive knobs and dials in Sony's TA-1120 amplifier user-friendly and any audiophile. Those who were Sony's premier customers would immediately recognize the value of an amplifier small enough to fit on a dresser. Those who didn't recognize its intrinsic value would find a set of quality or value in the polished chrome finishing of the entire package and be metaphorically blown away by the amplified sound of whatever the owner wanted the listener to hear, whether that be a song or a surreptitiously recorded conversation. It was a statement to the owner's technical proficiency, wealth, and power in a way that only Guangdong made possible. Sony stands apart from the crowd. Look at that. Hey, increase the win receipts. Fantastic. More, mon more money, growth, real growth income. Fantastic. Oh. How many receipts do we have? So we have 45, we need 5 more, that is not ideal. Legislative history. So here we've got this, so, Industrial Organization Ordinance, Excellence First. Um, we have 18 out of 21 Sony seats, 13 out of 14 Hong Kong seats, and 13 out of 28 Matsushita seats, and a Fujitsu seat. We need 5 more seats. That would be great. So if we do this one, we might be able to pass it if we do some extra legislative stuff. Um, or we just do more corruption stuff. Because technically, with us... One, two, three, four. We have four seats between Sony and Hong Kong that we don't have just yet. We could wait, maybe. Hmm. Decreases corruption. Attempt to excess corruption as best we can. Zujin support. As we increase it as well. That was Stanley Ho. This is GDP by 1%. Wanted on Country Park. There's amended labor ordinances. So. Uh, those buy us more time, hearts and minds. The future may be made up of many factors, but where it truly lies in the hearts and minds of men. Your dedication should not be confined by your own game, but unleashes your passion for our beloved country as well as for the integrity and humanity of mankind. Li Kuxing. That's got infantry kits. Nice. Permanent teacup. Mario was bu uh, burning the bread. She grabbed and took the crisp loaf out of the oven, which stuttered and belched smoke. Waving the smoke away out of the open window, she placed the loaf on the cutting board and tried to slice away the most charred parts. Behind her, a small Sony radio foretold, do foretold a doom and gloom. Roberto had brought the, bought the darn thing last week and had been done nothing but cry apocalypses ever since. Political instability, army units in Buenos Aires, that lira falling. Always prone, prone, prone. Every so often she wished she would just shut up. Outside a horn blared, and Maria looked out to see her four children scurrying to the path of a passing car. She scouted and hollered at them to come inside. Her eldest went to pick up the football they were playing with, but the guy in the car drove over it and burst it. 
As the children stared forlornly at the broken football, Maria sighed and twisted the knob on the radio. As luck would have it, she managed to find a jazz station. She took a moment to sag back against the countertop, savoring the brief quiet as she listened to her children's footsteps pattering closer. No doubt they were to demand that she buy a new ball for them. Didn't they know that leader was unappreciated or whatever they were calling, saying it was? Crazy world. Crazy, crazy world. That's alright. To provide a helping hand, Marita Kale and Liko Shing were in the antechamber of one of the Sony HQ's conference rooms. Marita went over the minutes of his latest meeting with local business, focusing on key sectors they deemed necessary. Things that he focused on included precision, audio manufacturing, and semiconductors. He decided to focus on these things for the government subsidies. Uh, Lee was ambivalent. He tutted, tut tutted at Marita, saying, There's so much more that we could do, and the world is so much more than just electronics for all that it might seem otherwise to you or me, Akeo. Maria did not busted his ground, you're right, Xing, and if I was sitting on infinite money, I'd fund the whole of it. But the thing is that the government can only give so much, and electronics as a market has far more room to grow. Don't forget that recent hypothesis that have been going around that the number of transistors that fit on an integrated circuit uh, doubles every two years or so, and that proves the hope for the future and not just the past, we'll have a lot of money to work with in due time. Lee shrugged. Fair enough. After all, Lee trusted that Marita knew that what he was doing. Professionalized police. They say in one gun. You have three people to turn when your neighbor is making a ruckus. The first is the Camp Pai Tai, who will charge an unwashed Chinese an arm and a leg for breaking the public peace. The second is your loan shark, who will charge an arm and a leg, so will send you goons to break your neighbors. And you have neither of the Camp Pai Tai nor the loan sharks, only then you call the police force, because the cop will charge your arm and leg, so will visit your neighbor, and charge him his arm and leg, so he'll do nothing and leave. Drugs are made out of police's expense for no, go no good reason. And what good is a force that they say is only used as useless as, as their last resort? Trust between the uniform and the people it's sworn to protect must be established before the Camp by Tai get too accustomed to enforcing Guangdong's laws as they interpret it. Artificial, artificialist looks. It is said that a lot can be told by man's shoes. In that instance, Mr. Lee's back black oxfords were covered in a thick layer of dusty residue, for it was not infrequent for him to leave his second floor office and visit the production line just below. His plastic operation was much a humbler venture than Marita's, but his aspirations might have been ever grander. As he stood on the elevated platform, his secretary handed him the megaphone. He mustered up the will to make known what was going on to be enshrined in his raison d'entre. My esteemed workers, I come to you not as your superior, your boss, your employer. I come to you today as a fellow man, a fellow Chinese, and a fellow father. As you provide for your families, I strive to provide for you. Ours must be a symbiotic relationship, like that of plants and roots. Only through your work will we be able to grow as firm and individuals. We are told that man proposes, God disposes. But let me tell you, our force of will will suffice in the dragging us out of this precarious situation. This nation we inhabit is a testament to the strength of a man's agency, and a monument to his ability to shape his circumstances for the better. Do not let the happenings of daily life trouble your path towards realization. I know that many of you face on the way back home, and in your places of residence. Therefore, let this be known by known all, that I will not find peace until things improve, that I will not rest until every bowl of rice is full, that I will profit until every household has sufficient savings to sleep comfortably at night. And let this be known, too, we are not alone, and those great, brave men are fighting as hard as we can in achieving these goals, chiefly my former partner, Morita Kale. When the right circumstances will come, we'll strike at the end of the corrupt bargain upon which this place has been founded, named the exploitation of the natives. We shall achieve the goals of our struggle if we are to lose, the whole of China will feel the pain. We must cease being the whipping boy, we must make this horrid state of affairs cease. The first applause ripped through the storm, so strong as to make the hanging neon lamps move. As the workers made their way back to the workbenches, a sense of pride began to insinuate, insinuate itself in the hearts and minds of everyone, for all the minds. Honestly, I'm going to take the political power now, because we might need that later on, and it helps us with growth a little bit more, and we still have surplus, so... Overall, not too bad. Please don't go to the nukes. I've not seen nukes here in this uh, game for quite a while, actually. So after this one, I know I want to professionalize the police. We actually might be able to sneak away if we... Well, we still need to do this one. When we do the industrial org, uh, organization ordinance. I can enunciate words. Yeah. Um, and see what we can do by bribing the other uh, companies here and whatnot. The programs established by Chief Executive Marita and Li Qixing have a limited effect on restructuring. Guangdong's competitive landscape their own, but for them to truly have an impact in Guangdong, we must secure back and roll out these programs in a formal capacity to cross Guangdong within the Legislative Council. There surely are ways of designing the future of Guangdong's economic framework in a way that gains political support to show that these changes are not as threatening to the five companies as they might otherwise fear, but can we convince them, and if we do, would we be working against our own goals? And most unfortunate misunderstanding. Hello? Do I have the honor of speaking with the Detective Sergeant Kawasaki Minori? Uh, which one do we want on this one? Oh, well, you're speaking to him. Good. And we recently happened by, uh, really by happenstance, more than anything, found out your department was making inquiries into one of our former colleagues. We are not at liberty to discuss the ongoing case with outside personnel. Of course, of course. Just a personal tip. You're wasting your time with Iwano. Never heard of him. Well, false. Uh, a lot on our part, but I guess that makes sense. He used to be a second lieutenant with us before he had to dishonorably discharge him. Drug problems, of course. I feel terrible for the wife, of course, but professional standards must be maintained. And I see. And is uh, that all you want to tell me? Is that up to you, detective? The phone rings silent. We're barking up the wrong tree. Please let that be true. Yeah. Nice try, pal. I just don't want to risk any more corruption. 
but we'll see. 100 political power is good to have. You know what, that much political power? Uh, where are we at here? 32, 29, 30. Ooh. Oh, that's a little more stable. They were really low here compared to the Yakuza. Really low here, too. So here, we're down by 25, which is a lot. We're down, we're only down by oh, 23. Here we're down by, oh, Jesus, 18. 18, and here we're down by 15. So actually, taking out Momai might be the best course of action. For now. That's as much as we're going to do. We're not going to get that very far with this, and i got to save the political power for all these... Uh, Corruption thing, so the matter of police professionalism. Commissioner Omori of the Guangdong Police found an out of the way conference room immune to peeping eyes and oversensitive ears to discuss the matter of professionalizing the Guangdong Police with his two superiors, the chief executive Morita Akeo and Li Kaxing. Omori opened the discussion. We all know that my policemen struggle with keeping order, even without the rogue variable that is a thrice darn campata running around all over the place. The brutes, they're shamelessly violent, brutish and uncaring of the rule of law, the concept of somebody being innocent until they are proven guilty. Honestly, it makes me want to vomit. All the more when I realize that their rampages actively harm and delegitimize us, our authority, and all the hard work you and I put in. At this point, Amori, I drink a glass of water and continue. Mr. Amori, Mr. Lee, we want to see an end to this. Uh, the Kenpai Tai kept in their barracks and my police free to take the place. It'll require a whole host of reforms. All these changes put together are going to cost money. Marita Ta looked at Lee. I know. We'll look at the budget and see what we can provide you, Commissioner. Amori nodded hopefully. We have no money. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Actually, I am sorry. But we have no money. So we're going to do this one, see this one, what this one does. And what is this one? Uh, huh. Where did you see this one? Okay. 44 seats. We need more seats. How do we get more seats? Oh, we can do this one, though. Eventually, we'll do capitalism with a human face. We are bystanders to a culture of unchecked corporate predation and exploitation, which treats its employees as disposable as a ball pen, ballpoint pen or a scrap of paper. The social ills caused by this culture are strictly visible as the nets stretched out from the factory rooftops with a mesh of fibers and struts cutting into the sky. For all his faults, Suzuki Tai Chi was not wrong in his assessment that the state of affairs uh, uh, would cause problems. Guangdong's capitalist model, in its current form, generates far too much resentment to be sustainable. But where Suzuki saw the problems through the lens of ensuring a docile populace, we aim for something more. Let it be known that Chief Executive Morita and Li Kaxing believe in capitalism with a human face. They believe in this not just because it's a more ethical way of doing business, but also because only through the power of the state can we compel our comp competition to do the right thing without crippling ourselves. 20%, that's not good. Put it down. Recall 1960. The Spartan Room in the Legislative Council Complex had been un reserved for under one name. The invitation was handled by another. The uninitiated uninitiate uninitiate observer. The meeting was entirely innocuous, as innocuous as one could get in Guangdong, where favors and fortunes were traded as easily as food or water. But anyone who knew anything, anyone who worked for Matsushita, Fujitsu, Yasuda, or the civil administration, was aware that there was only one name that mattered, Morita Akeo. They had watched for years as the assembled legislators had left the corporate bloc that dominated Guangdong. The departure of some, they admitted, was their responsibility. In fact, they revel reveled in it. Good riddance to those who had been defeated in power struggles or had stormed out of their, over their lackluster salaries, a few others, the malcontents, the dissenters, the principal household elves. They were singularly irritating but harmless. On their own, what could they ever hope to accomplish? Alone, we are powerless, Morita stood behind a podium and bossed. Whether Sony see all flanked by Li Kaxing on his left and Stanley Ho to his right, or rivals would prefer that way, but I am not content to simply watch helplessly. For those who believe in our mission, I promise you a brighter future. To those who have been left behind, I promise you a second chance. For those who dream of fortune, unfortunately, I cannot guarantee endless wealth, but for as long as you choose to follow us, I welcome you as Sony men. For uh, the assembly barely more than eight collapsed lightly, the sound of echoing faintly in the empty room, but the fact that it echoed at all was evidence enough that they can no longer be ignored, out of the shadows and into the spotlight. Look at that growth. It's not enough. The New Federation. Uh, as the days wore on, Morita and Lee uh, began to reach out to the countless Zhujian business professionals that they knew with a view on the former or forming closer links between the members of the already vibrant business community. These professionals worked on the edges of the Japanese electronics empires, finding spaces for themselves in such industries as textiles, plastics, stationery, and food. Eventually, enough Zuzhen were convinced where Lee and Morita felt confident enough to hold a meeting of a new business federation. At the meeting, Morita and Lee uh, Pitch coordinating action and building alliances between Zhujian players and various Guangdong industrial and business sectors. This network would make them stronger together in competition against Saibatsu or other major corporations in Guangdong. It also incentivized them to turn the previous small scale alliances of a convenience and necessity into something much greater. If things went well, it could even become a vehicle for genuine co prosperity in the literal sense of the term, of a sort that transcended the oft repeated adjunct prop uh, slogans. The members of the proposed federation were recently initially reticent at prospect of working with strangers and competitors, but they eventually grudgingly accepted the plan for two reasons. First, the government had been demanding closer cooperation between the Zhujian businesses. Second, it afforded them all the best chances of improving profits and growing their bank accounts. Finally, it was better to sail together than sink alone. 
the new federation with Marie and Leah at the center, grew as quickly as the news about it spread. Enthusiasm and hope grew too, as the concept gained traction and ironed out any initial kinks, and Marie and Leah became the focal point of this new Mercadel universe. Awesome. And eventually we'll do the mileage as of today. Dignity, work, and health and life, those are the two pressing concerns that we can take action to address today. The social ills affect electing it. Golan Dung's populace are impossible to ignore. Widespread poverty, rampant workplace death, suicide, and it's all amidst a haze of industrial smog and smoke that we increasingly poison the air we breathe. The most visible signs of a commitment to make Guan Dung something more of a factory line with the disposable people. To make good on a promise to do better, we must take action of the malaises of today. Matsushita's compromised. Morita smiled as he watched Matsushita. A reader of the terms he was offering, and as he finished, Morita asked, So, is this to your liking? Oh, God, look at that. South Africa, Jesus Christ. Matsushita rubbed his chin. Well, this will address some of my concerns about the ordinance on cutting a fair and open market. Well, Morita nodded. They both knew what that really meant. It meant that the new amendment would ensure that Matsushita's firms received enough preferential treatment that domestic Chinese firms would never be able to push him out of the market, which had always been Matsushita's real fear. That being the case, Morita said, Does this assuage your fears enough that you'll throw your support behind this bill? I'll have to decline, yes, I suppose it does. Oh, look at that. Adds 30% of Matsushita's seats in support of the current ordinance. Matsushita will support the ordinance in exchange for preferential incentives above Chinese firms. We ha we don't we can't pass it without it. And honestly, these are 3% corruption each for a single seat. Because mm. we have Fujitsu next, as well as Hitachi, don't we? I want to see what the next other two are, because I can always go back, that's why I made all the saves, to see if we can support uh, passing the bill and whatnot, so let's see what the other one's like. The Gadgeteer of Kwandang. Ibuka's demands, laying his glass on the desk, uh, more to side. Ibuka, whatever else could be said about him, did not mince words. The demands laid out in his letter were simple. The Big Five, due to their natural market dominance arising from both ingenuity and experience, should be prioritized over local companies when it came to contracts for a project related to the new industrial development initiative. However, he made his case and Marita knew that his old rival's real intention was to ensure the local companies wouldn't be able to use these new contracts to erode the economic dominance of the Big Five, the opposite of what Marita was trying to accomplish. Still, the actual changes the bill demanded were, in the grand scheme, fairly minor, and the votes are votes. Marita called for his secretary. Removes excellence first. Oh, we can't do that one. Yeah, let's see what Hitachi has to say. We'll probably go back and do the Matsushita one, so. These terms, very nice. Well, they're that close anyways. How about we just go and do this? Because right now, all we're doing is just building up roads. That's all I wanted. Just lots of roads. Purge corrupt officials, that'd be nice. Komai comes calling. It was never easy meeting Komai. The man's unfailing politeness always seemed to Marita to mask an underlying coldness, but his political connection couldn't be ignored. So when he held to agree to meet about supporting the new industrial development initiative, Marita couldn't refuse. When Komai laid out his demands, it only made Marita all the more, more ill at ease. Really, that's it? You want? You just want some money? Komai is meant gregariously. I'm a reasonable man. Free up a little funding for my projects and cut me in a few of the new government contracts, and I'll do whatever I can to make sure this ordinance passes. Marita continued to consider for a moment. The offer seemed too good to be true, but it's not enough. Decreases Matsushita seats. Interesting. Um, adds 40% of Hitachi seats. Increases corruption by 7%. Adds amendment Hitachi's deal. Funnels cash directly to Hitachi's pockets in exchange for high support. We don't need that much support. Honestly, the Matsushita one is probably the best one. I mean, but decreases Matsushita seat by 1%. 7%. That's a lot of corruption. All they want is money. We get tons of corruption. How many seats does Amatsushita have right now? 28. I mean, even if he loses one, that's not terrible. But it increases Kenpai Tai influence too. We'd rather Amatsushita have more government contracts over the Chinese and like 2.5% corruption for a few more seats. Or we would rather lose a seat to Amatsushita, increase corruption by 7%, increase Kenpai Tai control, and that's it. In the long term, the Hitachi deal is better because you don't have Matsushita taking over Chinese businesses, but that still seems like a better idea than 7% more corruption, losing his seat, and we pay him cash, but I don't want to increase Kenpai Tai control in any state. That's really, in the end, what we are trying to avoid. So I think I'm going to go back and reload the save um, and get Matsushita to join our faction and to help us uh, pass our first ordinance. Um, so, uh, but I think I'll do that off screen. I think we'll end it here and uh, 
we'll start in the next episode passing the bill. So, if you enjoyed the first episode of us playing with the TNO, or the New Order, Sony Plus mod, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll see and pass our first ordinance together. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.